All right, see you in a bit. All right, Southern California is at the center of a crime wave. Joining us to discuss the issue in his recent op-ed is Oceanside City Councilman and con congressional candidate Chris Rodriguez. Chris, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, come on. It's our honor. Tell us about uh, the op-ed. Where can people see it? Yeah, you know, you can uh, you can go onto my website, RodriguezForCongress.us, and I believe KUSI will be posting it uh, this morning as well. All right, and uh, I, I don't think it's completely out of the box thinking, but your feeling is, is that the soft on crime policies, if I may paraphrase, are irreparably damaging the state. Could you expand on that, sir? <laughs> Absolutely. It's these Democrat-backed policies that I've personally experienced as a local city council member that are soft on crime and they're not prioritizing our, our communities. You know, it's these failed policies like Proposition 47 and 57 that were backed by Democrats that are causing the chaos in the, in the destruction that we're seeing in our communities. For example, we have the smashing grabs going on in L.A., and you have the district attorney hiding behind his office, not responding. Uh, these policies uh, take an individual that steals up to $950, and it's, it's only considered a misdemeanor. It's a slap on the wrist. And so criminals are going to continue to commit crimes in our communities, and these policies are failing on a local level, on a state level, and they're trying to bring it to D.C., and that's one of the biggest reasons I'm running for Congress is we don't want these failed California policies spreading across our country and uh, polluting the rest of the United States. Doesn't it? I mean, it seems just like a logical thing that we, we you know, for, for small businesses and just society in general, that there has to be law and order. And yet you're considered an outlier here in California for wanting to, to, to hold people accountable for their actions. Be, Prop 47, if I'm not mistaken, sir, was back back then it was, well, anything less than $450, which I think is an excessive amount of money, was considered a misdemeanor. I, shouldn't that be like $50 or $100 or anything below above that is considered a, a felony? I, I, absolutely. You know, I'm a combat Marine. I have seven kids. And what I'm seeing this doing to our communities here in California is infuriating. Um, I don't want this to spread uh, to D.C. and the rest of the United States. The ACLU originally spearheaded Prop 47. They said it would lower prison populations and create more funding for education. It's done the exact opposite. It's put criminals back on the streets. We see these policies up and down our state, and, and they're trying to bring it to D.C. You have Democrats that are going after law-abiding citizens. Uh, for example, you have our Attorney General of the United States who is calling parents terrorists because they want to speak up at uh, local school board meetings. They need to be going after criminals, and we need individuals that are willing to fight for the American people. I'm a, I'm a Hispanic small business owner, and I can tell you right now, Hispanics across the board are fed up with these policies. They want to live their life. They want to live in safe communities. They love our police officers, and they love this country. And that's why I'm going to D.C. is to fight uh, for families here on the ground. You have Mike Levin, who said nothing last year when cities were burning down and uh, they, were, they were destroying small businesses, and they call it social justice. Well, what about the justice for the families and the elderly who are afraid to go grocery shopping or, or uh, you know, low-income earners that just don't want to go to work because they're afraid they're going to be held at gunpoint? We need individuals that are willing to fight for them, and that's why I'm running for Congress and I'll be in D.C. Well, uh, Mr. Levin and, and Ilk, were, were their concern was that the, the people that were incarcerated were disproportionately people of color and minorities and that they were uh, disproportionately represented in prisons and jails. So what's your reaction to that? If, if, if that's the case, how, what would be your plan to create justice? You know, we need to end this one-party rule in D.C., that is going after American citizens and not the true criminals. Uh, you know, Democrats, with their from their open border policies to attacking parents, uh, this has to stop. And it's going to take a fighter that can go to D.C. and represent the Americans on the ground and um, really 
focus our time and energy on taking the power from the one party rule and giving it back to both the American people and our police officers Chris, so they can do their job. Let, let me interrupt you just because we're, we're going to run low on time. But there's this attitude, uh, a prevailing attitude that is gaining strength in especially progressive areas like California that. It, you know what? Because of the social injustice, going and grabbing a bunch of stuff out of a rich store, that's okay. You're just making up for the injustice of society. How do you attack people of that philosophy? You know, that philosophy creates chaos. It is destructive. We, you know, we, have, we, are, we are small communities that are expanded up and down this state, and we just want to live our life. We want to raise our kids. We want to retire. We want to, you know, go to the park in our front yards and we want to be safe. And the only way we're going to be safe is if we equip our police officers to do their job, support our police officers and not, you know, spout rhetoric of defunding our police. That is completely unacceptable. We love our police officers. We love this country and we need to put an end to the one party rule in D.C. and put the power back in the American people's hands. And that's why I'm running for Congress. All right. Well, we'll see if the worm turns. Perhaps if more politicians find themselves staring down the barrel of a gun at a, uh, being, you know, armed robbery and, and starting experiencing some of the rank, rank and file, us Joe Blows out there who are getting conked on the head, maybe that's where the worm turns. Uh, absolutely. All right, Mr. Rodriguez, uh, we will talk to you again and have a safe day today, okay? Thank you so much. God bless you. All right. Right back.